What is going on, everyone? Welcome to episode one of our new uh, mini series for the week, The Little Record, where I, Ro, interview members of our community and the VGC community as a whole. And of course, it's no better fitting person that our inaugural guest is Furret's strongest soldier, our lovely mod, Swede. Swede, introduce yourself to the people. Hello, I'm Swede, uh, VGC player since 2020. Uh, and also VGC judge and local ferret enthusiast. There you go. Sweet. Uh, so yeah, Swede's been a member of Little Root Lessons for that amount of time, has been a mod, has helped us run events, has partaken in events uh, himself, and is just one of the pillars of the community. So we wanted to make sure that we had someone like him as our first guest. So you already got into some of our questions, just who are you, how long you've been playing VGC for, uh, but what brought you into uh, the game and the community? Like, why why start VGC? Um, basically, just the accessibility. I've always been playing Pokemon uh, since I was like eight when Red, Blue, Yellow came out. <clears throat> um, always during the 3DS era with like XY, Sun and Moon... Or as I was kind of like into like breeding competitive Pokemon, but never actually like using them. Um, and it was more like singles. If I was going to play, it would be like the odd singles battle here and there. Um, but for some reason, when Switch came out, I was just like, hey, let's go check out VGC. And there, hooked from, yeah, so, we are. Hooked from there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's, uh, it's funny how things work i feel like a lot of people started around uh 2020 um all of a sudden for some reason everyone got a lot more uh, time on their hands uh and uh it was this was a game and the way you joined it was kind of the same way with me where same time period and everything um so in the four years you have been playing vgc what is your proudest moment Probably my first event, really. Um, <clears throat> went, to an M- went to an MSS in Edinburgh, uh, which is like four hours away from me. That's That was my, my local. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, I managed to top cut with what now seems like, now looking back on it, is like an, a complete abomination of a team. Um, but yeah, <laughs> there was like Series 2 or Series 3. Um, Do you remember the six? Yeah, it was like Serena, God of War, Rotom Wash, Duraladon. I can't remember the other two, to be honest. But yeah. So I, I mean, was... but with uh, the Rotom and the Duraladon, th- those are definitely early Gen 8 Sword and Shield favorites. Uh, Pokemon that really benefited from the Dynamax uh, mechanic, and also, especially with Duraludon, uh made sure that your Hatterene and Didi matchup wasn't god awful. Darmanitan. Do I Darman? Gala That's, that's heat. That 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 uh, that pick. That's the uh, singles player in you. Yep. <laughs> Now, um, moving on, you've had a lot more VGC moments, and most recently, over the past few months in Regulation F, you have become the community's resident ferret guy, bringing bringing this Pokemon to a 5-4 finish at a UIC this past weekend. So, (laughs) we know that ferret's your favorite. Jay and I try talking through it. Uh, We see the follow me, we see the helping hand, uh, but talk us through everything with with Furret. Why now? Why this team? <laughs> um, <laughs> I have no idea, to be honest. Uh, <laughs> literally no idea. Um, there was... In the uh, Hemi Turner, we have like a... There's a running joke about Furret. Um, and I said... I'll build a team of Furret for Regulation F. It wasn't this one to begin with. But it turned into this one. And I said, I'm going to play a local with it. And if I top cut the local, I will bring it to Utrecht. So I do remember this. And you came in second at that local. I did come in second. In and 
I think the more impressive <laughs> part wasn't the furry. It was the fact that you lost your Roaring Moon and you had a few matchups where that would have been really useful and you were still able to power through it. Yeah, the Roaring Moon. I lost Roaring Moon to... I had the wrong the wrong stats, basically. I minted it before the tournament and I forgot to save it. And at some point I reset my switch. The stats changed when the guy went to do his uh, team check. That was the wrong stat, so I lost the Roaring Moon. But still, ha- but luckily, my opponent in top four, uh, he had, he also had a mistake with one of his moves on his Landorus, which means that we both were given a game loss. So we basically played a top best of one top four match. Okay. Uh, which I managed to eke out, and then yeah, and then but five e six in the final, and Roar Moon was kind of crucial to that matchup. So yeah. Didn't, yeah. Didn't, now Utrecht, how did you? I just just to jog our memory or let the listeners know who haven't been following your run with uh, this Pokemon. How did you finish at the special event? Uh, so in Utrecht, I finished. I went four four and dropped just because I was going to my friend's house, uh, which is about an hour drive away. It's going to get late, so <clears throat> went four four. It was basically the six, but um, there was no Misty Terrain on Flutter and. I think at this point my Ogre Pond was quite fast. Compared, yeah, my Ogre Pond was fast. Uh, everything else was just about the same. Okay, and then we move on to this past week in EUIC where you finished 5-4, sadly bubbling out of uh, the range of points, but to even have the record to be in range of points, again, with a Pokemon that only you and only you brought to the tournament <laughs> is impressive on its own. Are there any standout moments of uh, the UIC run? Um, probably just playing Billa and Jonzu back to back. Really, it was uh, unreal when I got yeah paired with Billa. I think I was at two two. Um, so when I beat him, knocked him out, and then I didn't even realize I was playing Jonzu when I sat down at the table, and then he mentioned like Nino's like, oh, you you're. you're you're the one playing fire, aren't you? And I was like, oh, that's John Zoo. Okay, cool. Uh, <laughs> um, I managed to squeak him out as well um, to go to, what would it be, 4 2? Yep. Um, so, yeah, I was completely blown away by that. Um, especially when I don't, <clears throat> being a working dad as well, I uh, don't have too much time to practice along with other commitments. Um, yeah, so beating them two back to back is probably the highlight of the tournament. Some, and um, then you ended up, uh, the, the magic was over. It was, um, I know you ended up with against, I'm trying to remember who your, it was like, I believe like your round seven, round eight opponent. opponent. Around eight was uh, James Beck. Yeah. Yep, you ended up with James Beck and that kind of ended <laughs> the, uh, the, the the miracle run. Uh, you, you got past two high end opponents and you couldn't fur it by uh, Beck. Uh, with Furret being said, what is like Furret's MVP moment at EUIC if there was one? Um, not a lot to be honest. No. <laughs> uh, it did. It, it had. It didn't miss a super fang. Anytime I That's clicked good. it, it never missed a super fang. So I can't. You can't fault it for that. Um, probably. Well, <laughs> I was about to. I was about to close out a really nice game one against John Zoo by switching in the Furret, uh, but he he decided that he would had enough of game one already and just forfeited. Yeah, and just forfeited onto game just, two. Just uh, just stole Furret spotlight straight little, from under. Little bit, under. but you know it came to game two and didn't do well. So <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, well, but yeah, I think um, mostly that. But yeah. It's a fur, you can't really do much with it, can you? So, um, just use it when I can. Are um, there any plans to bring it uh, in regulation G? Uh, I think, like, from even for myself, for regulation G, I'm just I'm probably going to just take a sit back, okay? Um, let the meta develop a bit, and then maybe hopefully after Worlds, if we get into a double restricted format, um, I can look into that and see how things are shaping up, yeah. So when you're not playing, you uh, have started, as you said, you started um, acting as a uh, a judge, an organizer in your local community. Um, what made you decide to 
start that path of not only playing the game as a competitor, but going to these events as an actual, like an employee of the event, a, a judge or an organizer? Um, basically just like me and another guy, um, when we go into the Edinburgh locals, we just like, we just wish we had, um, an event up near us, um, an eight hour turnaround, basically, <laughs> um, That's a to lot. a local. It's a, it, yeah, it's a, it's a lot, it's a whole day, it is a whole day. Um, especially when you're driving four hours, you play for a couple, uh, three, four hours and then you got another four hours back home. Um, and I just decided, you know what, screw it, let's let's have a look into it. Um, I sat my tests during my work <laughs> on my phone and just passed them first time. And I thought, okay, cool, what's next? Um, and go, went through all the processes and that. So, yeah, I'm pleased to be starting. Um, I've already ran my first PC last month. Uh, Congratulations. Second one coming next week. Um, so hopefully after that one and one in May, then hopefully I should be granted access to run some mid-season showdowns. So, how many people were you getting uh, at your PCs? Uh, so my, well, I've like the, said, the only one. run one. Yeah, so we had um, ten people at the first. No, we had nine. Sorry, there was ten, but one had to drop just beforehand. Um, we had nine people there, so that's already already a good start, really. For no, that remote. really is. Where, the remote location that I'm at, that I'm at in Scotland. Okay. So yeah, it's uh, we take those. Yeah, no, it's uh, really and what. As long as you can play enough, where you're able to get to that like four round, like top four, or so that that that's a a sol- a very very solid start, especially for your first event. And I know you mentioned uh, Himmy. You also have been uh, active uh, along with Little Root Lessons in the world of like Tom Hayden, Himmy, Nino. Um, how has that been with uh, helping them with their events? I know they're very, uh, they're probably the most active groups in terms of um, online tournaments, grassroots tournaments, especially the Tuesday night uh, showdowns, the Himmy's uh, Wednesday night tours, Nino's Fridays. Um, how has that experience helped you with uh, becoming a TO and running your events and working your events? I think it's, yeah, it's been really good actually. Um, when I started doing the role and then, Himmy asked me if I wanted to help out with his uh, Wednesday tours, um, and it, and shout out to him basically just for basically let me not run the tournament. Obviously, it's his tournament, but <laughs> uh, let me like head judge and kind of just making most of the most of the calls and that. And just having him there, um, just for a little bit of support. But yeah, um, I ran a couple of the. Well, I helped judge like a couple of like Nino tours and uh, the Tommy Hayden tours as well. Um, if he's needed, if he needed me, but uh, basically, I, if anyone needs a judge for like some random evening and I'm not doing anything, then I'm happy to happy to help out. Um, no, I don't charge. So some people have had I've had offers where people like trying to give me some money, and I'm just like, I'd rather you not pay me because <laughs> uh, <laughs> if I'm working for like three four hours and you're giving me 10 bucks i'm like it's not worth it mate (laughs) just i'll do it for nothing just you're doing it for the love of the game exactly exactly now uh one or one of our final questions uh again you've competed you've to'd and judged which of the two uh uh, which of the two do you like more right now like if you had to choose you have to commit to one uh well i really enjoyed my time at euic obviously winning games with furret and like having what was it five on the bounce i think i was really down after o2 yep. actually i was really down um i think like playing's better but okay i do i do love like i i did judge liverpool this year and it was a really great experience um but just sat but it's just like when i'm walking around the tables and i'm like oh i could i could be there i could yeah I could be in there so you you still have that itch in the back of your yeah, head. It's like, I, no. I want to go do this. I want to sit there. I just want to put my switch in that dock and beat that guy. Yep. I want to, I want to do that. But uh, no, we have to, it was, uh, it was really good. It was, I would happily probably do it again. Next, I apply to do it again next year. I can't assume everything, but yeah, I would apply to do it next year. I think. Okay. Now uh, we're going to start. Uh, this is our first, um, episode of the little Root record so this is going to be the first of a, of a series of a question that i'm going to ask all of our uh guests 
What is your favorite thing to cook? Oh my god. Uh <laughs> teams with fur it doesn't count. <laughs> oh, okay, that was that was the answer. <laughs> um favorite thing to cook. Uh I like to cook for heaters. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh beef or chicken? Chicken. Okay. Solid. Very solid. Really enjoy that. Thank you. So, sweet. Uh, before we wrap up, do you have any shout outs? Uh, anything you want to plug? Um, shout out to you guys. Uh, if it wasn't for Little Root, I would obviously we wouldn't be sitting here. Um, no, we would not. A, neither of us would discussion. be. Nope. So, shout out uh, Carl Carter, Self Row, Jay, um, for, for the fantastic work. Fan- shout out to Hemi as well, uh, and Nino for giving me the opportunities for like developing my judge skills um and yeah if you want to catch me i very occasionally stream on twitch at uh, speed underscore 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 <laughs> uh i will probably try to do some more streaming i mean me and carter are doing the the tag lock so whenever it's my turn i usually stream my my turns but He's like three, four weeks before he gets it back to me. So, you know, <laughs> we just have to Yeah, that, that, that tracks. Um, yeah. yeah. Anything else? Um, shout out to the family for tolerating me doing my thing, <laughs> doing my Pokemon things. Uh, yeah, but apart from that, if I forget you, if I forget anyone that's important, I, I, I apologize, guys. I really do. Well, sweet. Thank you very much for being our first guest. Uh, thank you for uh, being the the first face or f- other face that people see when they tune in to the little re- record. And uh, thank you very much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, we hope to have uh, many more uh, interviews after this one. If you have any suggestions on people you would like to see me talk to about VGC in the community, please let us know down in the YouTube comments. You can also tweet at us at LR Lessons. And uh, while you're in, in the YouTube, watch some of our other videos. We have the podcasts every Monday. We have our laddering videos, um, a fan favorite in the uh, the pokemon breakdowns those might be returning soon Uh, a lot of great things happening at little lessons so uh, keep your feeds refreshed thank you very much and tune in next time